What's up guys, in this video we're going to be continuing the Tycoon series where we left off. In the last video we scripted up these super cool droppers right here that would drop our cash and in this video we're going to be expanding on that and adding in a colorizer, materializer, and the little conveyor part at the back that will go ahead and destroy our parts but also turn them into cash. Let's get right into that. So what we're going to do for our colorizer here is that we're gonna add in a brand new part by clicking this button right up here and this should insert a part into your workspace just like this. Now with this part, you can either press Control and 3 to move to the scale tool or you can just press on the scale tool right up here and we're gonna make this a little bit thinner, just something like this because this is going to be the back wall of our colorizer. You can make this however big you want it to be. I'm gonna turn off cast shadow just so that it doesn't cast such a big shadow over our tycoon right here and the properties. You can go ahead and customize this to however you want it to be. I'm going to keep it at the gray that it is right now. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to duplicate this part with Control and D. So you can go ahead and press that and you should see another part in your explorer here. And then you can hold Control or Command on a Mac, I believe. And then you can scale down the top and it'll scale it down on both sides just like this. So now once you have a decent sized bar here, you want to move it out a little bit by pressing Control and 2 to get to the Move tool or you can press on the Move tool up here. And you just want to move it out like one or two studs, something like this. Well, not one or two studs, but I don't know, about 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 studs is about good. If you do need to change your unit of measurement, you can go into the Model tab right up here and then change up the move increment right here. I have mine at 0.1 studs and that seems to work perfectly for me. Otherwise, if you'd like to increase it up to about one or even zero, you can feel free to do that. Now we have our bar extruded a little bit. We can move it all the way up to the top and I'm also going to just bring it in a little bit on the sides just like that. So here is our bar and that is pretty cool. I'm going to change this to a different color gray just like that so that you can distinguish the two different parts right there. So now for the last thing that we need to do with our colorizer is add in a brand new part. I'm also going to turn off cast shadow right here in the properties just like that. And then we need to go ahead and scale this down all the way to the wall pretty much and make this into a nice square. Once you have a nice square shape, once again you can size this down to whatever size you'd like to. I'm going to make this a little bit thicker and I'm going to place it inside of the wall slightly. So now here's where you get to line up all of your buttons here. But the thing about a colorizer is that it's pretty much just a box with a ton of buttons on it. So we're going to basically have our part right here. And inside of our part, we're going to click on the plus icon to the right of that, and we're going to search for a click detector. With this click detector, it'll basically make it so whenever we hover over our button here, our mouse icon will change and it will allow us to basically click on our part. Now you can feel free to color this part however you'd like to. I'm going to make a red one, just like this. And then you pretty much just go about duplicating your parts and changing the color of the buttons right here. I'm gonna make a few different colored ones that are pretty common in most tycoons. Mostly just like really bright colors, all stuff like this. And you can feel free to do whatever colors you'd like to. All right, so I've got these five colors. I'm just gonna duplicate them and move them down a little bit, just like this. And then you can feel free to change up the colors from there even further. All right, so I've got a ton of different colors right here and we've got our bar right here on the top. So this is basically our colorizer. What we wanna do now is shift click all of our buttons so we can select all of them because we're gonna be placing them inside of a folder that we can keep track of later. So if you have all of them selected and then you right click in the Explorer, you can then click on group as a folder. Now we're gonna keep this as a folder and I'm gonna rename this to buttons. Next, we're going to rename this little bar right up here to bar, just like that. And then the part back here, you can just name it to whatever you want. I'm just going to name it to back, just like that. Now we can grab our back, our bar, and our buttons folder right here, and then group them as a model, just like that. And I'm going to name this to colorizer, just like that. 
So now we've got our buttons folder, our back piece, and our bar right here inside of our model. And we can go ahead and add in a script into our colorizer. So the first thing that we're going to be doing with this colorizer is we're going to get our buttons folder. So we're going to say local buttons will be equal to script.parent, find first child, our buttons folder just like that. And let's also get our bar, which will be equal to script.parent, find first child bar. And then we're going to create a simple for loop through all of our buttons here to see which one's going to be clicked or not. So we're going to say for i, comma v in pairs, we're going to grab our buttons folder and we're going to tell it to get the children of that buttons folder, which are going to be all of our button parts right here. Basically what the V is inside of this is every single child inside of that buttons folder. So since all of our buttons inside of here have a click detector, we can say v.clickdetector.mouseclick and then we're going to connect a function to that just like this. So since all of our V's or our buttons inside of our buttons folder have a click detector, we can go ahead and loop through them all and then check that if one of them gets clicked, here's what we're going to do. Let's go up here. First, actually, let's close off our colorizer and move it into our purchased items folder inside of our tycoon. And let's say local values will be equal to script.parent, which will get to our colorizer model. And then we're going to say dot parent again, which will get to purchased items dot parent again which will get to our tycoon model and then we're going to go one more down to our values folder just like that and then we can grab our value which if we open this folder up we can see our drop color value right here so we're going to say values dot drop color value dot value will be equal to our v dot brick color just like that so this is basically going to change our drop color brick color value right here that we have inside of our values folder to whatever the color of our button that was pressed is. So say we clicked on the red button right here, it's going to change our drop color value over to red. And since in our dropper, we programmed it so that whenever it'll drop a part, we made it so that that part's color is whatever the color of the drop color value is. It'll basically change the color of the part to that drop color value just like that. The next thing that we need to do inside of our script right here is say our bar dot brick color will also be equal to our v dot brick color just like that so that way it's got that visual representation that this is the color that you just pressed now let's go ahead and try this out one more thing is that we do need to make sure all of our parts inside of here are anchored so as you can see our parts are gray right now but if i go ahead and click on red see our part is going to be red now because this is red if I want to change it to cyan, it is now cyan, and so on and so forth for every other color that we have. So that is a pretty cool feature that we have right about now. Another cool item is just like the colorizer, but is for materializers. So, if we just scoot this over a bit and duplicate it with Control D, we can now have a materializer. Now, inside of our buttons, we're going to make all of them the exact same color this time. So go into the brick color, make all of them the exact same color, but instead of changing the color this time, we're changing the material. So for the material, you can start at plastic and go on and so forth for other things such as wood. You can go on to pavement, and you basically just get all of these popular materials that other people have used, or you can just use random ones that you like and enjoy. So feel free to use any type of material that you'd like to for this. Any material works and it will get the job done. I'm also just going to change the color of these backboards real quick. That should be perfect. Alright, so this is our materializer and we do need to edit the script ever so slightly. So inside of our script we can keep the same values, the same bar, and the same buttons. Except down here instead of messing with the brick color, we're going to go ahead and say values dot material value because that's the other value that we made right here dot value is going to be equal to our v dot material dot value just like that and then we also need to get our bar dot material and this will be equal to our v dot material dot name which i also need to change this value up here to name just like that so that was about it for our colorizer materializer. Let's go ahead and click on play and check this out. 
So now that we're inside of our game here, let me change the color to cyan right here and I'm going to mess around with these different types of materials. So as you can see now our part is neon, if I change it over to pavement it will be pavement and we can change it up to different colors as well so yeah. Now let's go ahead and add the little piece at the end of our conveyor belt here that will go ahead and change our parts into cash. So if we go ahead add in a brand new part at the end of our conveyor belt here and basically just make it the exact same size as it but not nearly as long just like this it needs to be like a just a simple square just like that and then we can change up the brick color let's say a nice bright yellow I'm gonna make this neon and then a cool trick you can do with neon materials is that if you change the color down a little bit it will still keep the same color but it will remove the glow of the neon as much so that is a pretty cool trick that we can add right there. Now what we need to go ahead and do is inside of our leader stats right here, we need to add in a brand new value for our cache. So we're going to say local cache will be equal to instance.new int value that we're going to parent to our leader stats just like that. Then our cache.name will be equal to cache with a capital C and our cache.value will start at zero just like that. Now we can close off our leader stats because we no longer need it for now and we can add a script into our part right here. So inside of our part we're going to say our local values folder that we need to get once again. So I'm going to name this to our cache part. And I'm going to move it to the our tycoons folder, our tycoon model just like this and move it into our main items and I'm going to put it inside of our conveyor belt actually. Now with our cache part we need to say local values will be equal to script.parent.parent.parent.parent.values. Now all we need to say is say script.parent.touched we're going to connect a function and this function is going to take the parameter of hit just like that. Next we can check if our hit.name equals equals to dropper part or whatever the name was that you changed inside of your dropper or set inside of your dropper. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to say our values folder dot our money value and this is going to plus equal our hit find first child our cash value that we stuck inside of there when we created it with the dropper. And now that we have already extracted the money from our part, we can go ahead and destroy our part. And one more check that we need to do is if our hit.name equals equals to dropper part and hit is a base part, then we can go ahead and do this. Just to make sure that we're not destroying anything else other than our parts. So let's go ahead and test this one more time. So playing the game, let's see if our part gets destroyed here and there was an error. There was indeed an error. I forgot to put a dot value at the end of our cache value right here. But now we can go ahead and play again. Alrighty, so our part's coming in right now. I completely forgot another value. So we need to say value.money value dot value just like that. Let's test it one more time. You see that got destroyed. So as you can see as our parts are coming down here they're getting destroyed once they touch this and if we open up our workspace go into our tycoons open up our tycoon open up our values and then look at our money value you can see this value is going up every time that a part gets destroyed inside of it so now next episode we're going to make it so we can actually collect this money and then so on and so forth from there Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video as much as I did, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. I'll see you guys next time.